Lip wax. And the man with the loveliest locks this side. <laughs> DJ Tree Man. And finally, Harbinger is led by none other than the man walking right across the front now, another 2020 visiting artist by the name of DJ Rob Swift. He is a Carpenter is the closing act tonight, uh, but without any further ado, I want to welcome you to something we've not seen before. So, ladies and gentlemen, friends, friends, for the first time anywhere, are you guys ready? And gentlemen, unleash hell. Yes. Exactly, yes. And you can do seven times as much damage. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
Uh, what was the most challenging about writing music to be performed by seven turntables? That was the most challenging part, was writing for seven people at once. That was the most challenging yeah, part in and of itself. Keeping them busy the whole time instead of uh, people waiting for their parts. Yeah. And keeping it musical and funky at the same time, that was the hardest part for me. Well, I think you did an excellent job. I think these people are out to agree. Uh, friends, let's listen to Harbinger as they debut a piece composed by DJ Treeman. This is Ghost Notes.
DJs typically work, and producers as well, work with pre-existing sound. They work with snippets and pieces of sound, and collage way and bring them together. Um, however, there's only one piece of the pieces we're playing tonight that really works from that perspective of these uh, composed pieces, and that's the next one. It's a, based on a previously existing work called Get Crackin' by the great master Cylinder. Uh, let's play, right here in the house, about 15 seconds of it so you can kind of relate what was done with it to what we're about to do with it. Now, slip wax, um, by taking these original stems or pieces, yeah. uh, what Carpenter was able to do was engineer kind of a new direction for the piece, uh, take it in a, another way, like through another vector, so to speak. And uh, so, so as DJs, what are you always trying to do with listeners in terms of producing and making sounds? Well, um, we're trying to find the parts of the song that are the most interesting maybe, to us and maybe to the listener. Um, and then put them together in a way that, you know, it's a new construction of like the old thing. So we'll look at the stems, which are individual notes from, say, a selected piece, and then we'll uh, take and twist and turn them into something brand new. A new composition. A brand new composition. It's all experimental. We're, we're trying different things out at different times. Certain people are doing different things. So this is, this is exciting for you, too. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, you know, it's... It's a lot of work, and but with the patience, and we have good DJs with good ears, and it's a really, really, really good team. <laughs> this is Carpenter reimagining the work of Breakmaster Cylinder. His piece Get Kraken, now transformed into a piece called Packeter. Enjoy.
Exactly. Happiness. You know, we're most excited as authors about popping the turntables and the opportunity to explore new sonic forms. You see, a turntable is an instrument if you treat it like one. Think about it. A turntable is normally the last stop, the end stop of the sound in the music production. But in hip hop, that whole pathway has been reversed and is now becomes the start of that process. It's an instrument, but it's an instrument with no negative sound. The only sound that makes is the one the DJ blows in the moment. The composer of our next and final piece, Vazan Santos. The <laughs> Not only can a turntable sound like anything, but that sound can then be treated with all the techniques that are Competent skill to scratch or DJ or turkeys can bring to the process that that sound is again loaded. And this opens up incredible, awesome wide pathways and useful opportunities, including one you haven't quite heard before. Um, how does that make you think about the possibilities of turkeys and polyurethane and all of this? Well, I think. Uh you know, we're using the turntable sound as an instrument, but we can create textures that uh, a real instrument can't. Uh, there's so that's what differentiates it. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. So this is territory that turntable coming into that are making their own. You know, Don Santos, I want to ask you this question. If you're a individual, I've been wondering this for a while. Seven DJs in a turntable subject. It's not a reality we're looking at it. How far can we push this? In other words, if we have seven turntables, could we have 17 turntables? A set, a set, and that test. Like a big man, like a jazz big man. Could, could such a thing work? What would, what would be the challenge of writing for a set and that of turntables? Oh yeah, we definitely believe that we could do that. Um, I think the biggest challenge would just be like the composition and creative parts for everyone. Uh, but certainly it's the more the merrier, I guess, you could, um, really close to that. Entirely possible, you say. Fees. Yes. This is a man who used it. Like me. Friends with a piece composed by DJ Vadon Santos. Here's Harbinger. This piece is called Simulacrum. Enjoy.
Stimmt. Is our last uh, act of the night, uh, but this is not our final moment. I want to. Uh, I've been given the opportunity to uh, to uh, give a final word that I'm going to take advantage of. Uh, again, my name is Harry Allen, I'm the artist here at uh, MIT with my colleague DJ Rob Swift. And this dream of putting together uh, multiple turntables uh, to work together is uh, one that I've had for a very long time. And um, I knew MIT was a place with a history of experimentation, and it seems so many people are talking about this, a history of experimentation in music. Um, the music that people who work with here brings it down at the front. And you can do the music, to Senegalese drumming, to European classical, to a deep history of computer music. And I knew that if I could move this story forward, that MIT was a place that I wanted to go to do. Uh, there's so many that I want to thank and that I'm going to thank right now. I need you to indulge me. And I hope up. Um, so first I want to thank the creator for letting me walk in this time. Here, where are you? The here makes everything in my life better. Uh, see, home and wherever you are. I want to thank Miguel for so many times. Uh, first of all, uh, Miguel uh, is a big part of the tech and sound. He's the person who makes sure you can hear me right now. Uh, but he's so much more than that. He's a person who, first of all, commands of everything technical here. And if for any chance he can't find it, he goes out of his way to look for it again. That's the kind of the social person that you want. I can think of so many times in the, in the, doing the work of my class, the class I thought, the IAP class I thought here, that I, the Miguel, we help me put this together. And then something that he showed me before, he would come down and patiently do it again. It was never in the, anything like that. He stayed late so we could rehearse, uh, giving us time that he could use for himself and his family. And I'm, I'm really thankful for what he's done. I also want to thank the people on this team. People like Becca and Kevin and Wesley and Christian and Kaylee and so many others um, whose names I'm not going to right now, but my favorite Dyson is very Charge it to my head and not my heart. Um, I want to thank the team and cast, Leah, Heidi, Harry, and Aaron Zaborn, who I just met, uh, who was the person who told me, yes, we can do this at MIT, and this is how we're going to do it. Um, and I'm really thankful for uh, that he believed the cast. Um, I want to thank a few more people. Just one four, is I think I'm really ten. So I'm going to knock seven out at once. I'm going to thank Carpenter. I remember the day that the musicians Mostly comprised, mostly comprising a table manners crew here in Boston. <laughs> These guys came in the audition. They had no ego, no pretense. Everyone to a fault was like, I can't believe I'm doing this kind of Rob Swift. And not only were they incredibly talented, as I found out then and later, but they were incredibly gracious men. They are smart, they're funny, they're humble for fault. There's no Hollywoodisms here. These are guys who came, and I'm going to put this on a line, so I don't know if they're telling you, 
they did not charge for this. They were volunteers in this process because they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to see what they could do working on these tools. Okay, and um, so one more person. I could not have 
made this journey alone because I'm a journalist and a journalist and broadcaster by trade, not a DJ. I'm just a person who's passionate for DJing and thinks that it's, it's uh, the most amazing process for creating music that's probably ever been ignored. I mean, it goes into the brilliance of the brilliance of what DJing actually is. <laughs> In the garbage. He said she in the bag. I couldn't have done this. <laughs> I couldn't have done this without um, the great DJ Rob Swift. Rob Swift is not just an amazing DJ with some of the most shocking forearms and biceps. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Swift is a profound thinker, um, teacher. Uh, he's a he's a sensei. He's a sensei. I needed someone with teaching experience. I needed someone who had experience with putting together larger ensembles than one or two DJs. And through the executioners, he had worked with four at once at their, at their height. And then I also needed someone who I could work with, who I could, you know, look at every day and say, I still like this guy. <laughs> you know how it is when you get, you get tired of someone who just can't stand in the heat. And Rob Swift came through brilliantly. Um, every night we would have these debriefs. After working hard out here, rehearsing these guys and getting them ready, we would go back to the hotel we were staying, and I would put up the iPhone and we would talk about what just happened. And those were valuable, valuable times. And I also have to say, the last time we were up here together behind this desk, he was talking about the five tenets of his belief as a DJ, not just about not about money or about fame, but about the inner qualities of a DJ that you must have in order to do good, important work. Where is Rob Swift? Right there. Right there. <laughs> Come on this way, please. I couldn't think of anything, and then very late it came to me. And I ordered it, but it was only going to get here after 9 o'clock. <laughs> but then, particularly, it came early in the afternoon. And so I have it now to give to you. And I hope you see where you're coming from and you know why I'm giving you the what we did together here. It is. And I don't know if people can see it, but what it actually is, it's Harry. <laughs> It's a copy of the Book of Five Rings. And it's inspired by every member of Harbinger, each person saying something to about what a leader you are and how you led them to this night. And I hope that you'll treasure this as a memory of this moment. You know, this moment that is Work for this. It is done. Yeah. You can listen. Yeah. <laughs> well, real quick, I just want to, I personally would like to thank you, Harry Allen, for being the visionary that you are. This whole situation tonight here at MIT would not have happened if it were not for all the crazy stuff going on in that head of yours. <laughs> so thank you very much, man. Um, Harry, I, I remember, would call me like all times of night, morning, day, it didn't matter. He really wanted this to happen.
Um, he would text me, have me on the phone for like two, three hours, email me. Email me. Um, but I get it. He's a thorough person and he wanted this to come out right. And if it wasn't for your thoroughness, tonight would have never went down the way it did. It was a success, Harry, so congratulations. Mr. Sinister right there. Thank you. 